Bibles uh, for a while, they, and it's a larger area, they do recommend crossbow-type products. Very. It's one of the really good things to use crossbow on. You know, I had my first experience with crossbow, and I think I've lost two maple trees. Uh, that stuff, you spray If you spray it and it's windy, it travels, yeah, and I it is indiscriminate. Oh. Unlike Roundup. Roundup, you know, it's it has the specific purposes. It's uh, it's not going to kill your dandelions. I mean, oh. it's... But crossbow, whoo. Yeah, don't spray it within a mile of a vineyard. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, it'll it'll drift, and then you we've we've got an issue right now where a vineyardist is quite upset, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, herbicide drift has got his vines on that whole side of the vineyard, and it's, I it's mean, this stuff kills everything it touches. Right, exactly. It's even better than my vinegar. It's even better. <laughs> <laughs> It lasts longer. <laughs> <laughs> the vinegar worked on the driveway. I swear to God, you can come over and yeah. see. There's there's nice little strips of death. Did, didn't you test that with the crossbow? Or did you test it with the roundup? No, nah, I I, I, I test. Oh no, oh no, I I, I I I my comparison study was a, a chemical called high yield. Um, kills all. Ah, I see. And I, I found this old bottle, and, and so I decided to mix up, uh, according to the directions, mm -hmm. um, a batch, and I, I sprayed some areas. And, yeah, it, it killed stuff. It kills all. It, it kills all, but it takes like a week. Yeah. And the, the part that I sprayed with the vinegar, mm -hmm. it killed it overnight. Yes. It also <laughs> burnt the leaves off the yarrow. It um, and 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 in um, comparison to the the glyphosate and the the crossbow, the glyphosate it takes days. Uh, you know, you you might see something within a, a two days, but the browning and the oranging process uh, takes a little bit longer. But the crossbow, whoo, it's yeah, it's you can see brown leaves almost. Uh, yeah, it's day, yeah. well, that's because it's got two four D, a chemical called triclop triclopril. Triclopyr. Triclopyr. Yes. That's the chemical you want to see in the ingredients if you want the major heavy-duty artillery. Right. Yeah. You want to go out and nuke something, mm -hmm. um, like poison oak. In a very confined area. Because, again, read the label. Uh, drift is just simply when you spray and it the wind makes it drift t off to other areas so uh, when we talk about the the drifting of the chemicals it's it's a real phenomenon <laughs> it it the they're light as air they fly away and they get on other plants and uh, some of these chemicals are they'll they'll kill things immediately yeah d and the mist actually it you know if it gets caught in, in a, a wind windy area it can go up mm -hmm. and travel miles yeah and when it comes down Oops. it's still death yeah it's raining death yeah but it's like millions um but there are single parts per million is it, still deathly and there are times though when they're when like poison oak for me is one of those things that just shouldn't be around and if you can get yeah. rid of it get rid of it as soon as you can and uh with with as much anger <laughs> and vinegar or vinegar as you can but uh uh, yeah, and uh, this is just one of those ways to do it, uh, Roundup and, and the crossbow. It's not something you want to be digging up and handling. Trust me, it is, it, it, you, there aren't enough gloves to put on your hand <laughs> to hand make me want to ever handle poison oak again. Not, no, <laughs> no, not barehanded. But when you're using these sprays, you you got to be careful not to use them around any place where there's going to be active running water. Mm -hmm. Don't use it around springs. Um, dress up in your your nuke suit and, mm -hmm. and hand remove the uh, pull up the the poison oak if you're around a spring or a watershed or a well mm -hmm. or uh, stock feeding tanks mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. You <coughs> you got to really be careful with these chemicals because they're they're bad news yep. for green things and other Absolutely. living things. But poison oak is just as uh, is bad too. So um, the the other thing is if you don't need to kill it all uh like if you ha if you're it's up in the woods and you don't go there mm -hmm. then don't waste your chemical yeah 
because it's, it's these chemicals are expensive. No, they really are. Okay, so uh, so poison oak infestation is it possible to uh, to have a uh, poison oak free area? Yeah, yes. it's possible. It takes a lot of work. Yep. And uh, and and chemicals are going to be involved. So let's move on to other infestations. <laughs> the uh, other the the. the the next question is, is there a safe way, IB spray, uh, that can be put on unwanted blackberry bushes in my yard? I have them cut back two years in a row, and they continue to spring back up. I do not want to use harmful pesticide. I think the roots are not being destroyed. I think she meant to say herbicide. Yeah. Uh, pest- good, yeah. good. Actually, that's a really good point, because a pesticide is for an animal, insects. Yep. Bugs. And yes. Yeah, and uh, and herbicide is for plants. So and you're absolutely right. And I understand their concern, especially if it's in a yard where you can have grandkids and you're gonna well, or or young young children that may be like yours. <laughs> uh, you ha- you have two uh, delightful children, mm-hmm. and you're certainly not gonna spray. Uh, not directly in their mouths. No, no, no nuclear waste anywhere nearby where they're gonna be playing. You hope, uh, but. Blackberries is another one that's a process. Yeah. Yeah, you can mow them down, you can you can whack them off and the roots still in the ground and I think it just makes them angry. Mm-hmm. Cuz they really come back the next year. It is one of those plants that uh that people say if uh, if you don't get it out by the roots then it's going to come back. Uh it is. It's uh th- that's where all of the genetic material yeah. to reproduce is is in and they can just spring out from everywhere. Yeah, if, if you don't have a Kubota with a bucket, though, mm-hmm. uh, to actually <laughs> take out the top. Or even if you do. <laughs> or even if you do, take out the f- top 12 inches of dirt and right. go it, put it someplace else. But mm-hmm. there is a process by which you can, over time, mm-hmm. get rid of blackberries mm-hmm. pretty handily. But when you cut it isn't, them, And it isn't just mowing over them. I no. Mean, because I think a lot of... Uh, a lot of people might have that one little blackberry sprig that's in their yard. Yeah. But year after year, they just they go ahead and they mow it over, and they don't think anything about it more than, gosh, there's that vine again. It's back. Yeah, and just uh, there, I mowed it down again. Yeah. Um, and then the next year, maybe they they dig it out with a spoon or something <laughs> like that. But that's not enough either. But it just keeps mm. coming back. So it's a chemical process again, possibly, right? Right. You you uh, clip off the vines. And it works really well if you clip them off at like a 45 degree angle to make a larger area on the vine. Mm. And then you spray it. But you do this like in September. Uh, Right now they're actively growing. You can spray anything you want and they'll just turn green and and the root will sprout a new sprout. Uh. But if you do it in September, when they're starting to go dormant, they suck that stuff down into the roots. Oh, absolutely. Right. That's the time to kill blackberries. And it may still take a couple of years to get rid of all of them. Uh, but that's that's the time to actually start actively working on getting rid of the blackberries. Is, um, go ahead and pick them first. And again, uh, the crossbow is, is one of the yep. recommended uh, yep. chemicals to do that. Roundup doesn't work. Uh, they well. Nah, they, they just get they get cranky. Let me take that back. They, I think that the Roundup Roundup brand actually has a blackberry thing, but it, the the chemical it can't be glyphosate because that doesn't. That no, it's trichlorpyrrole. Yeah. Um, trichlorpyrrole. Pyr. Pyr. P y r. P y r. Okay, but anyway, yes, and the 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 time to do that is is you know. You can mow them off now just uh, and to see which ones are going to be active <laughs> growing back. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, or to identify the roots. Uh, and small little sprouts, two or three inches tall, you can, you can spray them now, and they'll die. But that is something that I but just... But the root won't. That I just learned, because uh, I will go out there, and I will just I will spray it like I would a normal broadleaf uh, herbicide. Um, but that's really not the best way to take care of it. You really you want to you wanna cut it off. And spray that top little that new wound s- because it's taken everything back into yeah. the into the root system anyway, and and in theoretically you can do that now you can you can do it right now right, um, but, but you're saying there's not going to be it's any not effect. going to be as effective as if you wait until they're actually starting to go dormant. So you're stuck with them. Well, no, you can still mow them off. Yeah. Um, you know, and they'll sprout again mm. and. The old canes will die. You can you can take them out, mm-hmm. 
but the new canes, the the green ones, uh, those you're gonna you're gonna have to clip them off about oh, you know, leave yourself a little stub, mm. and uh, just spray the end of it. Don't don't try to spray the whole plant. Uh, if you if you go out and spray spray bleh, spray your blackberries now, mm. yes, the leaves will die. But all you've done is create a fire hazard. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a bunch of dried up. Yeah, you got a bunch of dried brush, and especially if it's out along the road, and somebody flips a ciggy butt out the window, and mm-hmm. oh, surprise, surprise, your fence is on fire. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's so. That's why you're not doing it. Yeah, that's. Now. Yeah, don't worry about doing it right now. It's a good thing to look forward to, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can plan on it. Okay. Well. Anyway. It is uh, 9:32 right now. We'll take yep, a break. Yep. We got to take a little break. And uh, it is. It's not warming up like I thought it would. It's it's 65 degrees right now, and it it really does feel like it's about 75. Uh, well, that's that's because we're here in the in the studio. But uh, later on this afternoon, yeah, it's going to be 80 on the deck. Dry. A dry heat. North oh. northwest wind just sucking the moisture out of your plants. Yep. So uh, anyway, you're listening to the root of it right here on KLYC 1260 AM, Yamhill County. The start of the season is right around the corner. So is your local Kubota dealer, where you can get a great deal on a new Kubota B-Series tractor during Kubota's Get Something Started sales event. If you're thinking about a rugged, compact tractor with a smooth-running diesel engine, then a new Kubota B-Series tractor has your name on it. With a powerful Category 1 three-point hitch and quick-change time-saving features, your Kubota dealer is the place to start. Right now, get zero down and 0% financing for up to 60 months. So if you're worried about green, think orange at the Kubota Get Something Started sales event. Visit your local Kubota dealer or go to Kubota.com. Zero down, zero percent APR financing for terms up to 60 months on selected equipment now through June 30th, 2014. Not available for rental national accounts or government customers. Zero percent APR, low rate financing not available with instant rebate offers. Financing available through Kubota Credit Corporation USA subject to credit approval. Other exceptions may apply. For more information, call toll free 1-888-465-8268. At West Tax Service is targeting tax savings for you. Get a handle on your tax situation and in the process, ease your stress from upcoming taxes. You can do this by meeting with Patricia Hofer at Outwest Tax Service. Patricia is a real person with over 20 years of tax preparation and consulting experience. When you meet with Patricia, you will have an old-fashioned sit-down, one-on-one conversation, and you will come away feeling much better about your tax situation. Call Out West Tax Service at 503-554-1444. Patricia Hofer and Out West Tax Service are members of the National Association of Tax Professionals, the Oregon Association of Tax Consultants, Oregon Board of Tax Practitioners, Consultant License 284. 438C business license B15243 at West Tax Service is targeting tax savings for you. And we're back here to the root of it, right here on KLYC 1260 AM. Oh wow! Okay, so so we got the the poison oak, the blackberries out of right, the right. Uh, so those are pests of a plant variety. Now right. we're going to go into pests of an insect variety because, yeah, they're out right now, and I'm talking about aphids because my roses have got these white little things just all over them. A week that weren't there a week ago. No, my my aphids are green and brown. Uh huh. And I, I took care of their little issue because it was one of those things that, you know, I forgot to do last spring or last, which, last which month. Which one of those things you forgot to do? Well, there's a I, way you can prevent kn- this? There's a way you can, you can kind of prevent it. Now, there's lots of nice ways, lots of totally uh, safe and sane green ways that do work. Mm-hmm. Horticultural oils and insecticidal soaps. Mm-hmm. and They do work. And... I have a tendency to, this is the one t- one time, I know that's a lie. Right, I know. That's, all, that's why I'm laughing over here. <laughs> this is the one time I break those rules. This, those, yeah, you know, I don't practice. Self-imposed what, rules. Yeah, I, don't, I don't practice what I preach. I, I 
go when Bymart sends you that little book. All right. You know, the little book of coupons. Mm -hmm. Well, in there is most generally a wonderful product put out by Ortho. Mm -hmm. And it's the only one that I buy out of the book. Let's let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Ortho Rose Pride. Okay. And it, it's a fertilizer and it's a bug killer. Uh, and it's systemic, so you don't have to spray anything goes on into the, the roots. It goes into to the root of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when we say a systemic herbicide, that's something that can e either be taken in through the through the soil, through the roots, right. or you spray it on the leaves, and it goes into the roots through the vascular system of the plant. Right. Well, this stuff when when I when I give them when the roses first start to sprout and and it's it's you know late spring, actually I did it in April. Mm -hmm. And it lasts for a goodly long time. So any dark green waxy leaves? Is that what you get out of this? That's what you get out of it. Yeah, yeah it's a fertilizer and a bug killer. And uh, my neighbor's got aphids. That's where I saw them. I don't. Oh. I don't have aphids on my rose bush. But I only have one rose bush, too. I have, uh, yeah, let's say I have 10 rose bushes and the aphids have just started, so I know what I need to do. And for those of the that are uninitiated, that are, are don't know what an aphid is, it is the very tiniest <laughs> of, of uh, it's when they get together that it really becomes the, the biggest problem. But uh, like you said, you've got brown and green and yeah, and there's and white. there's various varieties and and they stick to a certain plant usually too. Uh, you've got your rose aphids, you've got your your broccoli aphids and uh, the tomatoes. But usually they're they're plant specific, so they look differently when when compared to uh, side by side with with one another. But always female. Yep. There's no males. No. No. No boy aphids. None of them. Uh, no. Self reproducing, asexual. Self <laughs> they're self pollinating. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, they uh, and they can produce up to what, twelve offspring yeah. a day. They give birth to live baby aphids. They look just. They're clones. They're <laughs> just like the parent. And, and literally, they are clones of the female because she is yeah. reproducing herself inside of herself. And then spitting these things out that then continue to also suck on the sap. Yeah, and they the start plant. sucking as soon as they hit and, the stem. And when, when I talk about they weren't there last week, and I'm starting to notice them now. So let's say that I've got a oh, small colony being uh, two or three yeah. dozen on the roses right now. Tomorrow, it's like twice as many. And then the day after that, like 12 times as many. It's just incredible how quickly these things just reproduce yeah the, the clones reproduce pretty quickly too they don't like have to go through puberty or nothing right but yeah they're uh and they can damage plants mm -hmm. severely they can, you get enough of a colony of aphids they can sucker bone dry they're living 20 to 40 days yeah each and but they're producing they're reproduce. producing every day right they're producing 20 days 40 days of it. right they're uh, each one of them. So, if you took, yeah, uh, do the math. It's right. and that's what it's exponential. It's completely. Yeah. And and what they do is, um, they they destroy the, the the plant matter by sucking. Like they they will get right on one of those plant veins, one of those vascular tubes, yeah. and just leave their mouth open. It's like they're like sticking your mouth on the fire hose, and just opening the valve and just. <laughs> Because yeah. they're not sucking. They're not sitting there going. Yeah, they're not sipping. Right. They are just putting their mouth on the tube and letting it blow right yeah. all into their mouth. Yeah. Dirty little beggars. But the cheap way to do it is just blow it off with a garden hose. They don't because crawl back. For for all of their, their genetic evolutionary, uh, you know, yeah. ironness, they're, they're pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But because you spray them off of the plant, and, and well, let's just talk about roses. You spray them off of the roses, they get disoriented. They spend more time trying to figure out where they're yeah. going, uh, and they end up dying before they can get back up to the plant and start to do more damage. But while, they're, while you're doing this with a garden hose or insecticidal soap mm -hmm. or horticultural oils, which smother them, mm -hmm. and, uh, that just sounds like fun, smothering aphids. Right. I mean, it's like you being covered in honey. It's like, oh, well, that sounds really nice, but you can't breathe. Yeah, you can't, got, breathe. <laughs> can't breathe. 
you got to be careful to get the ones under the leaves. If you mm -hmm. spray the, you know, you're just spraying the stem or you're, or you're spraying the plant, you have to actually kind of back brush the leaves and spray that's them too. That's a very good so point because that's where the eggs are. That's yes. where the eggs are. And that's where a lot of the vein, the, the, the plant right. veins are that they're latching onto. Yeah. It's not really on the top. That's on the underneath of the leaf. Yeah, the adults crawl up and they go right for the rosebud. Mm. And then they leave their eggs, and, you know, their, their little guys underneath the leaves to protect them for a few days mm -hmm. and then as soon as the little guys um, mature a little bit they start producing under there and then all, then they crawl up and join the rest of the adults up by the rosebud and so when you pick this beautiful bouquet of flowers to take into your wife or your your companion uh, god yeah yeah and there it they really are. it's horrible and i made that mistake one year with uh, with a broccoli aphid uh not understanding what all of these uh gray bumps were <laughs> all over the broccoli but uh quickly understanding that that's what an aphid looks like yeah but if if you again though if you catch them early you can you can get a head start on them and you can you can knock them down pretty quick mm -hmm. um there's actually a lot of things in nature that like eating aphids which mm -hmm. is cool Mm -hmm. ladybugs and parasitic wasps that that's a fun thing uh, the that, parasitic wasps yeah they they lay their egg in the aphid and then as the little yeah. the little wasp larva eats the aphid and it crawls out I think alien the movie yeah yes it's uh, without it's the sigourney weaver <laughs> just just with asexual <laughs> insects yeah yes. But um, anyway, so lace and, and the ladybugs, the ladybugs, uh, lace wings, right? Um, various wasps, but ants aren't helping the situation at all because they're milking the honeydew that the aphids produce. They appreciate the aphid. Yeah, they, they farm them. Right, they farm the aphid. Literally. And uh, so, so ants not helpful. No, they're not. They're not your friend in that particular case. But if you can get a ton of lady beetles to to just hang around your roses, good luck. Um, but they can they can devour a colony within within days. Well, they're, you, they're sucking them dry. Yeah, you can you can buy ladybug uh, uh, eggs and. Um, but what do we say praying about mantis eggs? But what do we say about uh, buying ladybug eggs or, or even a whole bunch of? They're them? gonna fly to your neighbors anyway. They're going somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> as soon as they as soon as they do one lunch, boom, they're right. out. Exactly. They just stop by the buffet. Yeah, and it's not that they see. Oh, look at this rose. It's covered in everything that I would ever need to eat for my entire life. They're like, well, this was Spago. Let's go on to yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> and giant buffet. Yeah. I'm over the fence. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, other than natural predators, um, well, keep your plant healthy. Yeah, you know, uh, don't over fertilize it with high nitrogen and force it to make really eager green shoots. Juicy, 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 yum, young, yeah, yeah, because that's what the aphids are looking for. And I swear to God, they can they can spot a bright green sprout clear across the mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. And it would go, oh, look, there's one over there. Yeah. Let's all go over there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, across the, and they skitter across the street, you know. Yep. So then you also want to prune, prune off uh, badly damaged uh, foliage. So the, the, the brown dead leaves, uh, go ahead and get those off because those are just going to promote disease uh, within the plant and also creating soft tissue area. Well, you can get aphid traps, too. That's uh, have you ever used those? Have you ever tried that? Yeah, they actually work. Yeah, yeah, they catch the flying ones, and they're they're they the fly now. <laughs> yeah, the little suckers got wings on them. Uh, that's how they get from plant to plant sometimes. They don't crawl down a stem and then walk across the sidewalk and crawl up the next one. They, they because just they're stupid, they, they, they wouldn't make it that far. No. <laughs> They don't look both ways. <laughs> right, no. no. Because, again, you spray <laughs> off, you spray them off with water, and they get disoriented. Ooh, what do yeah, I do? Yeah, well, if you spray towards the next plant, you just wash them over there. Yeah. And then, yeah. And when they come to, they, they start dining. Um, but you can uh, use these sticky traps because they're, they're colored uh, the, the same color as a, a flower. Mm. And so the... Like you said, the aphids are dumb, yeah. and they'll go to anything bright yellow, and they'll just go, and, you know, splat. There they are. Ah. It's kind of fun to watch them kick. Anything else getting stuck to those? You got the lace wings, you know? 
No, not you know? so much. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a tendency to, because they go by, by scent, by odor, by, you know, by pheromone, by plant, uh, the natural draws of the plant. Yeah, so for me, simplest process, get a garden hose, spray them off. Um, for you, with the roses, I can almost see that being beneficial using the fertilizer with the uh, uh, insecticide inside of it. Yeah, it's it's easy. I'm I'm more to more to. Yeah. Anyway, it's less. I I'm ashamed. Do. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> what I like though is the idea of uh, growing plants that are going to attract those natural predators, and so you've got wild buckwheat, yarrow, uh, sweet fennel, spearmint, and mm -hmm. uh, the crimson clover. If you if you want that. This is this is one of those places where tansy's actually handy. Yes, because exactly. it draws uh, the butterflies that yep. that uh, devour. Um, I have a couple of good sized yarrow plants mm -hmm. at each end of the garden, mm -hmm. and so I I've got lots of butterflies and lots of guys that that fly in. Yep. But uh, there's most. But then the you've got the insecticidal soaps. Uh, there there isn't really one of those those crossbow esque kind of things no. that you want to be uh, because p first of all that's an herbicide and but there's no real pesticide or insecticide that gets rid of these really any easier than water no uh and you ha like the insecticidal soaps and and things like that are only good while they're still wet right once they dry they're useless yeah um but anyway, we're going to take another little break. Because um, uh, because now that you've taken care of the aphids and gotten them all off, you're probably wondering, how am I going to grow that county fair vegetable that I'm going to enter this year? So we'll go ahead and we'll yeah. talk about that when we get nice, back. Nice segue. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's 948 right now, 65 degrees here in McMinnville. You're listening to The Root of It right here on KLYC, 1260 AM. Valley Brewery and Restaurant has just released their new summer menu. Come in and check out great new items like organic arugula and house-smoked Northwest salmon salad, the classic Cubano sandwich with Carlton Farms pulled pork, or the old-fashioned roast chicken and the best fish and chips in town. Hey, don't forget that they serve the finest all-natural Angus beef in town, raised on the family farm and dry-aged for 21 days. Their steaks and burgers are the best you can get in the Pacific Northwest. Fresh produce is starting to arrive from their garden on the ranch, so check out some of the great vegetarian and gluten-free entrees on their new menu. Golden Valley provides you handcrafted beers, food, and wines from the great Willamette Valley since 1993. Open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., 4th and Johnson, downtown McMinnville. Golden Valley Brewery and Restaurant. What are you saving for? It's a good question, because big dreams are financed by smart savings. And there's no better time to start saving than when you're young. That is why First Federal waives all service fees and minimum balance requirements for account holders under 18. So skip or run to First Federal, because your big dreams of tomorrow really do start with saving today. Your friends at First Federal are ready to help you invest in your tomorrows. First Federal, we're here for you. From the really great beer brewed in the room next door to the tantalizing menus of pulled pork, Reuben, or try the bangers and mash, local sausage grilled to perfection, served with hand-mashed taters, caramelized onions and peppers. And tomorrow, there may be another surprise on the menu. You've arrived at the Granary District and the Grain Station Brew Works. For lunch, dinner, kick back and watching the game or enjoying a brew with some friends. You can't beat the unique, historic, old barn feeling for taking a break and having a good time. Smell the freshly ground coffee. Enjoy eating meals prepared from the freshest foods. Like Oregon, it's historic, unique, and a fun down-home place to be. Just a stone's throw from downtown at 8th and Alpine in McMinnville. Once you try the Grain Station Brew Works, you'll be back. See you in the barn. Grain Station Brew Works, McMinnville. with us right here on To the Root of It. It is 9.51, and we've been talking about pests, poison oak, 
just things that you just don't want. And the reason you don't want them is probably because you want to grow some vegetables, something to eat, right? Well, that's, your th- that's the major purpose of, of vegetable gardening is to feed your family, feed your kids. And the fact that fresh grown right out on the patio or in the backyard tastes really good. Uh, I, I went down to Farmer's Market uh, Thursday. Uh, and stuff's starting to come out. It really is. Really, and it's it's super good. So I got uh, onions, and a, then I went over to um, Baird Family Farms, the orchardists, because mm-hmm. they have those big red cherries that are uh, growing up. In are the, an anomaly. They are just <laughs> you know, like unru- apples. Oh yeah, it's pr- a, a plums it's, at the very least. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's the one thing I'd I'd sell oh. my firstborn child for. So one of these things that you can enter <laughs> into the county fair, county fair, uh, coming up here in August, and um, I I have entered into the county fair. I've uh, placed first for my radishes. And cool. It's, it's it's really it is uh, the county fair is about bragging rights. It can seem daunting. Um, but really, it's it's a really good time. I won two dollars. So, not bad. Uh, not bad at all. Uh, each division um, has has something to to be gotten out of there. The cucumbers, um, any vegetable you you can think of, you can probably. There's enter so it in. many classes that you actually have to go get a fair book, and you can get those at the extension office. They just mm-hmm. give them away. Right. And then you can you can pick a class and grow for that class. And it's really important when you're growing for the county fair. And I really, I encourage anybody that's uh, that's a gardener, just to just to do it. And if, if not, uh, go to the county fair and see what people are growing because it, you'd be pretty surprised at your capabilities. <laughs> it's your own <laughs> capabilities. Well, uh, the open class flowers are phenomenal because there's so many classes. Uh, your delphiniums, uh, mm-hmm. if you brought the only delphinium, and I think of vegetables, you get a prize. But, but you're absolutely right. Uh, there, there, there's the flowers. Uh, I remember sunflowers that were, were eight feet tall. People brought in huge and, things. And some of these things, they're not in season for the fair, but you can bring them in uh, beforehand. Well, you got to kind of start planning for the fair. You know, um, it, it may be too late to, you know, do it this year for mm-hmm. some particular entries because mm-hmm. uh, it's getting the growing season's going. Right. I mean, you, know, you are in it. Somebody else is already way ahead of you in the squash department. Right. Exactly. You know? But you can you you get the fair manual and like I say, you can pick it up over at the extension office and you can plan for next year. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a young friend who had never really thought about putting things into the fair, and so I encouraged this this young lady to to do something, you know, you know, display something. Mm-hmm. So she goes out in her dad's garden and she filters a bunch of squash and things like that. The f- the first year she tries it, lo and behold, yeah, like you said, she won like seven bucks. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, uh, it was it was nuts. I have framed my two dollars. <laughs> my two dollars are framed. I'm a county fair award winner. I am I am a champion. Yeah. I am well, the radish king of Yamhill County two thousand and twelve. The next year she got really carried away because now she had the scent of money on her hands. Right. She come home with over thirty bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's not bad for uh, you know, swiping a few squash and veggies and it really is it's fun it gives you a reason to to have the garden around and maybe you don't realize it until you have that uh, radish that it might be county worthy the important thing though is to get uh, whatever county you're in uh, we're here in yamhill but uh, every county fair has their um their book uh, available right uh, and most of them are available online you just go to the the county fair website and you see right there the, the like you said the different classes the rules but what's really important is to note how many of something that you need to bring because it's not necessarily well I've got this one pretty flower that I'm going to bring in when in actuality the class requires you to bring in six of those flowers no that's part of the rules that you got to read right um, I don't know of anything that, uh, for display purposes, you can get away with 
uh, less than about three in the vegetable exactly. department. You got to exactly. have three cucumbers, three squash, and they got to all be identical. Because mm-hmm. when the when the judges go by and look at them, they've got a an actual list of criteria that they're judging these. Uh, products buy and it's about uniformity it's not just well i have this this one that got out of hand yeah. whereas all of these other ones are really r- rinky dinky small and it, it, it's about as a gardener i can reproduce this multiple times and just just because you got a three foot zucchini don't mean that it's a winner right um three little zucchinis 10 inches long that are all absolutely perfectly the same with the same little crook on the end mm-hmm. that's a winner right not just the biggest. The biggest doesn't yeah, always biggest win, especially if you yeah. only have one of them. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, one of those misnomers. But uh, it really, it does. It gives you a reason to concentrate on, on in what's in the garden. And uh, so, so, for instance, uh, a county fair might require you to bring in 15 beans. And beans are a really good one to, yeah. to talk about because, speaking of identical, I mean, right. you have this bean that is six inches. The pot is six inches. It contains five peas five beans inside it's really they can get that specific and to see a plate full of actually five bean pots that look exactly the same you know it's kind of cool it's kind of cool i wish they were in my steamer i wish they were in my belly (laughs) yeah um and each county fair has different requirements that's why it's important to get the uh the fair manual for the fair that you know like the amhill county fair um, is probably one of the nicest fairs mm-hmm. in in the Oregon, as far as I'm concerned. And it's not just because it's our fair. Yeah. They really do a super, it super job over there. It doesn't hurt that it's our fair. <laughs> yeah, but we've got excellent facilities and, and beautiful right. settings. And and the horticulture pavilion there is right next, mm-hmm. uh, is attached to the Master Gardener Demonstration Garden. And there's a huge picnic area that you can... Uh, um, eat your lunch at mm-hmm. while you're enjoying both the, the horticulture pavilion and the demonstration garden for the master gardeners. And judges, uh, when they're judging those things that uh, don't ripen until uh, September, October, like pears and apples, they're not, they're not ready when the fair happens. So yeah. they're judging on where the progress is in right. those, those. But uh, don't bring in uh, green tomatoes, unripened tomatoes, expecting the same kind of... Of, of result because uh, actually cherry tomatoes should be done and ripened. Right. Uh, most tomatoes uh, you're you're gonna have are, are ripened by fair time also. Yeah, but they take into account what's what's in season mm-hmm. and and like you say the 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 growth progress of your particular entry. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it requires you to bring in five parsnips, mm-hmm. well, and you only brought in four, well, you lose mm-hmm. uh, because you have insignificant. Mm-hmm. display and it's not necessarily that you lose automatically but it can lead you to disqualification especially if you have a loaded class with 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 more entries but if you know if, if you're the lone <laughs> entrant or or the or you, you're in three you're, you you could still get into it but the rules are there to be followed uh, obviously the most important thing that the judges are looking for however is unblemished food just uh, or or just unblemished, no spots here, no bug crawling here. Just right. You got to have clean, f- clean produce, clean flowers. Clean flowers, right? This exactly. is another time to really make sure the aphids are dead. You get docked points for powdery mildew on those roses. So, yes, you uh, do. Yep. Um, and if you win at the county fair, then you're eligible to enter the state fair. How exciting! And that's more money. Oh my gosh! Bigger you're talking, prizes. You're talking two dollars at the county fair. What is that? Like ten dollars in state fair money? Oh, it's a huge ribbon. <laughs> it's a huge. <laughs> <laughs> but you're truly, honestly, I I hold on to that. I'm a county fair award winner. Really, I hold that close to my heart. It's, it's really one of those accomplishments. If I could say state fair winner. Oh wow! Yeah, you get a ribbon as big as a apron. Oh man, you wear that as a cape everywhere <laughs> you go. Uh, well, Ray, it's ten o'clock. Yeah, it's ten o'clock. Let's give it up. Uh, let's go man. home and garden. That's right. Uh, let's go raise those county fair entries. And it really, uh, just go down and, and check it out if you're out there listening. Um, the, the county fair really is it's a, it's a fun place for gardeners to to look at what other 
people, farmers, gardeners are doing. So. Uh, another, real quick, like, another quick. interesting um, category, though, is bases and arrangements. Arrangements and displays. I'm sorry we didn't get to get yeah. into that, but you're absolutely right. Displays and arrangements is yeah, another one. Yeah, weird pots. Oh, mm -hmm. cool stuff. Anyway. Okay. Well, you've been listening to The Root of It right here on KLYC. Uh, 1260 a.m. here in Yamhill County. We will be back next week, same time, same here. Yeah, keep your tools sharp. We play your favorites. KLYC, McMinnville Forest Grove. ABC News Now, I'm Deirdre Bryant. First Lady Michelle Obama spoke at a memorial service for Maya Angelou at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. She said the poet's words carried her from the south side of Chicago to the White House. Also paying tribute, former President Bill Clinton and Oprah Winfrey, who called her the greatest woman she's ever known. A publicist for Tracy Morgan says the actor and comedian remains in critical condition at a New Jersey hospital after a six-vehicle pileup early this morning on the Turnpike. Killed in the crash, James James McNair, Morgan's longtime friend and writer. Immigration overload in Arizona. The federal government is flying hundreds of migrant children from Texas to Arizona. The children are crossing illegally from Mexico and are arriving alone. A makeshift holding center is said to be running low on basics. All eyes on California Chrome at today's Belmont Stakes. Many placing their bets on the chestnut colt to become the first triple crown winner since 1978. This is ABC News. And now, another golf confessional brought to you by Golfsmith. A man who's in the Federal Witness Protection Program told us he recently left his quiet, anonymous row house and went to Golfsmith because right now, when you buy $99 worth of Adidas golf apparel or shoes, you get a $25 gift card. And we hope Jimmy Collin of 3792 Morningside Lane becomes a regular... Oh, no. Right now...